By the way, have you ever talked to a guy who was in a kamikaze attack? I want to tell you a story here now for just a brief second uh, about that. You know, the kamikaze is almost legendary. And uh, it is, it's a, it's, it's a legendary thing. I mean, most people, it, it almost is, a, it's unreal. You know, you just hear a kamikaze and it's kind of a, people even make little jokes about kamikazes and all that. But uh, I had the chance a couple of days ago, just happened uh, inadvertently, I'm riding along through San Francisco. I was out doing a thing in San Francisco and I'm in a car with a guy who had been a deck NCO. In fact, he was chief, uh, a chief on uh, the, the arrestor gear. You know what an arrestor gear operation is aboard a carrier? Well, an arrestor gear is the gear that arrests a plane that is landing on a carrier deck. Now, they have four or five uh, flexible, actually, they're like big flexible, uh, uh, sometimes they were rubber, all different types of equipment. When, when the plane comes out, it has a hook, and it may catch the first, the first barrier, the second or the third, and then, boom, you know, it pulls it back. Well, he was the NCO in charge of that on two major carriers during World War II. Uh, one of them, I believe, was the Ranger. I'm not sure, but I think one of the one of them was the Ranger, and the other one was uh, I don't know, the Yorktown, I think. But nevertheless, he was on these carriers. See, so he had fought through all these various battles of Truk and the Battle of Rabaul and so forth. And so, just by coincidence, we were riding along, and and uh, he was talking about things. We got on the subject of it, and. He was a re uh, retired chief. And so I just happened to think of it. I says, did you ever did you ever get yourself involved in a kamikaze attack? And he turned and looked at me and said, was I in a... Oh, man, he said, I'll tell you. He says, you see the guy down there that's the doorman at the Fairmont Hotel? And I said, yeah. He said, well, he was on the same ship with me. And he said, uh, he was in the hospital for nine months as a result of a kamikaze attack. He said, the, the plane hit the gun tub that he was in. He says everybody in the gun tub was killed, with the exception of this one guy who is now one of the doormen at the Fairmont Hotel in San Francisco. If you go there, what are they? So he, was, so, uh, he said, I says, well, what, what was it like, you know, being in a kamikaze? He says, I'll never forget. He says, one kamikaze. Listen to this story. This is the kind of stuff you'll never see in the movie. He said, because of, you know, I was arresting gear. He says, we were taking planes back on, on board. Uh, there was a patrol coming in of bearcats that were w real low on fuel. So he says they were coming in, and uh, they were they were slapping down on the deck. And uh, he says all of a sudden, no, these were wildcats. I'm sorry, these were wildcats coming in. And he says suddenly we uh, there was a report of kamikaze attack coming in. And he says he says I just got turned around. He says it all happened so fast. He says we've been under kamikaze attacks for some time now. And, and he said, we'd had several near misses. We'd hit, one had hit the fantail ones. And he said, but this, this one, he said, I turned. He said, just at that instant, I turned. And he says, I saw this airplane coming in. He says, he wasn't three feet off the water. He says, he was coming in low. And he says, he's coming in low and absolutely full bore. And I said, what kind of an airplane was it? He said, a Zeke. Uh, a Zeke, in, in case you're not uh, familiar, is a Zero, which is a single-engine fighter plane. And he said he had a bomb. He said he could see it. He says the bomb was attached underneath it. See, this is not an ordinarily bomb-carrying airplane, but he was carrying a bomb. This is the whole point of it. So he says he's coming along. He says, and he says he's not more than a, a half a mile away from me. He's closing at about 350 miles an hour. And he says, my God, he says, I turned, and I saw him coming. And he says, and of course, everything in the deck, he says, we couldn't level. They couldn't lower the guns low enough to hit him. He was that low. So they're boom, boom, boom. They're firing all around him, over him. He says, and the, the, the pom-poms are going like mad. He says, I knew he was going to get us. He says, he'd come right at us amidships. He says, I hit the deck. He says, and, and the next thing I knew, he just came right up over. He just zoomed at the last instant. He just went right up over the over the edge of the deck, and he just slammed into the deck. He just, he, bam, he slammed, slid across the deck. He says, he was about, oh, maybe 100 feet away from me. He says, he slid directly across the deck and smashed into the front of the island. So he just, bam, and he says, he's crashed. And he said, well, the next thing he knew, he says, I'll never forget this sight as long as I live. He says, the pilot of the airplane slid the entire length of the deck. He says he was lying flat. The pilot was thrown out. He says he slid just the on this deck. You know, this uh, the decks, by the way, in case you don't know what a deck is made of on a, on a plane, on a, on a carrier, they're made of wood. And uh, this, 
There's a special type of wood. See, so here are these big planks. They're, they're plain, very smooth, of course. But he slid along this deck. He's just, he's just sliding flat. So he didn't bounce or anything. He just, he just didn't, he just, bam, the plane blew up. And he said the great roar of flame everywhere. You see, he said the gasoline flew all over the place. He says the bomb didn't go off. He says, had the bomb gone off, he said, we'd have been broken in half in, in, instantly. So for some reason or other, the bomb didn't work. He says, and the bomb itself, he said, wild story, he says, the bomb went right through the base of the, the island, penetrated the deck, went right down through three decks. This bomb just went right through three decks, just boom, 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 like that, like a gigantic 500-pound bowling ball. He said, just went right down there, and it, it lodged down in, in one of the storage compartments just went down into the hell bent for election bam that was it and of course they were afraid it was a time bomb at that point well he said that the pilot slid across the deck just slid flat he just <laughs> slid about 200 feet well you can imagine sliding like that and then the body stopped and he said for a second everything hung there like that he says there were flames coming out of the bottom of the island he said you could see pieces of the plane all over the place he said and, and and we were waiting for this bomb to go off. And he said, here was the pilot lying on the deck. He said, with that, about 20 guys who were lying all flat on the deck at the concussion of this thing, they were expecting to get blown up. You see, got up, and he said they were kind of stunned. He says, I, I, I didn't know it all happened so fast. He said, I was kind of, kind of knocked out. So he said, we walked. The next thing he knew, he said, here we are. We're all standing now around the body of the Japanese kamikaze pilot who's lying there on the deck. <laughs> he says, we're just so standing there in the circus. Nobody's saying anything. He says, it's like a, out, of a, out of a curious dream or something. He says, and he was wearing, he said, I'll never forget what he was wearing. I said, what was he wearing? And I asked him, he says, well, he had on his, he had on a helmet. You've seen pictures of him. He said he had on a helmet, but he said he had on, the thing that hit him right away is he was wearing this bright green scarf. He said he had a very bright green scarf. And he said, one of the guys reached down, and he was just lying there. He said, one of the guys reached down, and he just takes the scarf and just pulls it off. He just pulled it, slid it out like that. And he said, was, there was blood on it and everything else. And he said, and here, here was this kamikaze pilot lying there in his, in his jacket. And he said, what got us about it was he was a little, so tiny. He said, he was a little tiny guy. He said, he was about, looked like he was about four feet nine, a little bitty guy. And he said, it was a very strange moment, he said, because he looked, he, 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 kamikaze had been sort of mysterious to them. And he says, and here's this little guy lying on the deck. He says, about four feet nine, he says, and he says, so help me God, he raised his hand, he says, he looked like he was about 12. And he says, we just stood there, he says, all of us. He says, the ship is burning, he said, the, the bomb is going down through 500, you know, down through the decks down there, 500 pound bomb. And he said there were two or three guys were killed in it, by the way, that were hit there by this uh, this thing. And he's in the places. And we're all standing around looking at the body of this guy. And he says, curiously enough, when he fell, when he slid, his jacket, he said he had a leather jacket, and the jacket had gotten torn, you know, sliding like he was. And he says he, there were slit pockets in the jacket. And he said, I remember these nutty details that his jacket had torn open and some... Uh, some uh, Philippine invasion money had fallen out. And he says he's lying on the deck, and here are some of these, these Philippine invasion dollars floating around, or yen. They were Japanese money that the Japanese had printed up. And apparently this guy flew out of the Philippines, see? And he says here was his Philippine money and his green scarf. And he says and this 12-year-old, he looked like a 12-year-old kid, he says, lying there. He says we just stood there for a couple of seconds. He says, nobody knew what to do. Isn't that a weird sight? Now, that, that is a story. I says, well, what did you guys do then? He says, well, he said, <laughs> he said, the, he says, then, then, of course, everybody sort of, uh, it, it, it broke up that minute because we were under attack again. He says, a couple of others whistled over. And he said, the next thing I knew, they had taken his body, uh, just the way they were picking up anybody else that was hit. He says, they took him down to the sick bay, and there was this little kamikaze product down there. And uh, I said, well, what'd you do then? He says, well, he was dead, of course. He says, so... Uh, the day after they had a military funeral, he said, when we died, he said, we had lost five or six guys in this, this attack, and he says, we had a military funeral, he says, and we just, we just put them uh, down with the rest of them, you know, they had a regular funeral, they read the thing, he said, that's all they could think to do.
And he said, so what they did was they put his, and he had a Japanese flag with him, and they put this Japanese flag over the bag that they, you know, they put him in a bag, see, when they lower him like that. And he said, we could put the Japanese flag, he said, it was a strange moment. You never see things like this. Isn't that a weird story?